biggest difference between then and now is that uh, 11 years ago I had hair. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, ladies, uh, gentlemen, contestants, judges. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone at the Japanese Consulate, uh, including the people at the Japan Information Center for inviting me today. And I'm very happy to see uh, an audience full of people who are interested in Japan uh, and in studying Japanese language and culture, both of which have had an extremely profound impact on my life and on the particular path uh, that I've chosen. It's a nostalgic feeling standing here on this stage in front of you uh, about 11 uh, years ago, as you've heard. Uh, about 11 years ago, just like many of you today, I was a contestant in this very same speech contest. I remember feeling nervous about everything. <laughs> I, uh, I had all sorts of questions. Had I worked hard enough on my speech? Was I going to remember it? Was I going to be nervous speaking in front of, of an, an audience? Uh, what were the judges going to ask? <laughs> What's the code to the bathroom door? <laughs> and I remember Dr. Chikamatsu uh, looking at me then, uh, pretty much uh, with the same, uh, you know, giving me the same look that she was giving me. Uh, <laughs> the look hasn't changed between now and then. Uh, and, and her eyes are asking the question, Jason, why? didn't you do a better job of memorizing your speech? <laughs> In the end, I won what I believe was the Sister City Prize, which included a round-trip ticket to Osaka and homestay uh, with a fantastic host family. This was perfect for me because I was always interested in uh, culture in Osaka, for example, manzai, a kind of comedy, uh, or entertainers in the Osaka area. Uh, my, my host family even took me to see a show a live uh, a comedy show uh, with my favorite comedians. Those of you who are awarded travel prizes today, I hope you take advantage of the trip and use it as an opportunity to meet new people and become familiar with at least uh, one more aspect of Japan or Japanese culture in which you're interested. For me, this speech contest, as well as working as a coordinator for international relations on the JET program, provided the motivation to pursue other challenges in Japan, such as grad school. I feel very fortunate to be in this position uh, in which I find myself today, but I think you guys, uh, everyone here, uh, you're much more fortunate than I was when I was uh, studying at university. I'm going to explain why. Perhaps for many of us, our initial interest in Japan uh, was rooted in popular culture. For example, uh, video games, manga, animation, perhaps film, television shows, things like that. When I was an undergrad, resources, uh, well, access to such resources were fairly limited. Uh, it, it's, it's not as if I was an undergrad before the age of the internet, but uh, <laughs> the internet obviously lacked the maturity uh, that we see uh, in the internet today, uh, the, the maturity that broadband has, has given it. Um, if you want to study Japanese, you have an endless supply of magazines, newspapers, TV shows, films, manga, uh, and animation from which to choose. In addition to that, you have almost steady access to NHK broadcast. Uh, Japanese video games, novels written in Japanese, and Amazon Japan will deliver directly to your door. Uh, basically what I'm saying is you have no excuse not to study and enjoy your studies. <laughs> uh, these are all things that, that, that I didn't have. Of course I didn't need them because I had Dr. Chikatsu. Uh, and I hope you take advantage of them. What we do share, however, are many unique opportunities afforded us by people who are willing to help us pursue our interest in Japan and Japanese language and culture. Sometimes it's our university professors and lecturers who remain patient and supportive despite our failure to grasp a certain grammatical point or our forgetting how to read a certain character for the 20th time. Sometimes it's places like the Japanese consulate and the Japan Information Center that make opportunities uh, to welcome us and to meet people with the same interests, um, like today's speech contest, uh, thus spurring us to keep moving. Sometimes it's a governmental effort that provides us with scholarships to study in Japan or opportunities to work in Japan. And sometimes it's the random stranger in Japan who, after we've reached one of the troughs within the undulations of culture shock or even life in general, 
exhibits an act of kindness that rejuvenates our spirits. I have been the lucky beneficiary of all of these, and I'm certain that many of you as well have already experienced them or will experience them. I would like to conclude my remarks by reminding you that one of the most integral steps in receiving opportunities is working hard to the fullest of your potential, and I'm sure everyone here has fulfilled that crucial step. It's also important to give when you have an opportunity to do so, and for many of us there has never been a more important time uh, to give to Japan than now. With that, I wish to bid you all the best of luck in your future endeavors, and thank you for your time.